Welcome back to the channels Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Let us keep the reading of my book Cluders, Mare Pop Beyond the Cloud, available on Amazon. In this part we will keep the reading of the chapter for seven months, one more film and all is well. Or is it? Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Let's go. I turned around and I could see him it was the first time in real life but not the first time I had seen him. It was the boy who had appeared in my dreams in the phase of Twilight influence mixed with Hunger Games. It was a slightly older, or rather more mature version of Marcos himself, with the same beautiful features, but much more masculine and not so much adolescent. He came with two of my cousins, both older, one with 18 and the other with 19. The three came from inside the house to the backyard sort of in slow motion like a movie scene. They did not see us at first but I think from that moment everything would be very different for all of us. Note. I think you may have guessed that the guy who had just arrived at the party is also the same one that was with me watching the debut of Divergent. What an upgrade. Throughout the party we tried to continue our conversation, but both of us were distracted by his presence. Marcos looked at the older boy with some distress and tried to get my attention back on any subject. For my part, I'll admit I've been standing for a long time staring at him. It was not simply because he was handsome, as it was with Marcos as soon as we met, it was because of the whole situation. How could I have dreamed of a boy I had never seen? Marcos ostensibly noticed my eyes on him. I don't think I even disguised it. Do you know him, Mare? Who? Who? Who else? That guy who's looking as if he were a boat with a lighthouse. Don't say bullshit. I was actually doing this. I just, it's that he seems so familiar. So you already know him. No need to be jealous, Marcos. I'm not jealous, Mare. This guy looks like he's dangerous. What? He has a weird way. An empty look. Marcos, stop being crazy. He's even a bit like you. It's nothing. He made a gesture of disdain, but I saw that he caught the subtle compliment I made. After a few minutes of silence, Still watching the boy go from side to side with my cousins, being introduced and greeting relatives and friends, Marco said something very strange and also made me very angry. Mare, after you introduce yourself to this fellow, you're going to have to promise me you'll never speak to him again. What? I did not believe the authoritarian tone with which he said that. He tried to put a paternal tone, as if protecting me, but he sounded controlling and tyrannical. I started to laugh out of my mouth before I spoke. Marcos, you are aware that you can't dictate anything I do, aren't you? I know. He looked down and swallowed. So why talk such idiocy? It was my last resort. His voice faltered even more. Last resort for what? Is there so little self-confidence that I can't even meet another boy? An older one? That you try to forbid me from seeing him again? I think so. After all, it's not too late for you to change your mind. How could I change my mind, Marcos? What are you talking about? He looked behind me. Think of what I told you. There's still hope for us. I frowned in puzzlement at his enigmatic tone, but did not have time to ask what all this meant. Someone touched my shoulder. I turned around and there were my two cousins and him. Heimer, how's it going? I hugged them both with affection and then we were introduced. This is Leandro, our friend from school and he says that he is a fan of your blog. Hi! Finally I meet the famous Mare Pop. Blandly, I was staring into his eyes and he was looking at mine. Smiling sympathetically. He took my hand and a kind of electric charge passed through my body. It was not something unpleasant, quite the opposite. He had something sweetly familiar with his touch as if we had touched ourselves a thousand times in other lives or dimensions. I released his hand slowly and turned to introduce Marcos. This is Marcos. Hi, Min, said Leandro, laconic and disinterested. What's up? Marcos said it with indifference. Min talk. Poor vocabulary for embarrassing situations. The five of us talked a little bit about amenities. My parents' anniversary, my blog, movies, our schools, 
differences and similarities, future, universities, government and weather, it was a bit cold, but the rains had already stopped. The atmosphere of quiet rivalry between Marcos and Leandro seemed to have settled permanently when they disagreed on issues of the future and the labor market. Marcos showed that he believed that there was an established and natural order in which we studied and worked hard to maintain a certain standard of living. While Leandro argued for the need to question this kind of naturalization of a state of affairs in which the young person of today was being prepared to be the slave of tomorrow, I could not help noticing the same kind of ideological polarization I had been having with Marcos since my text about the Hunger Games. I began to think that, as the Katniss character was caught in the middle of a dispute between the believing of one in the system and the revolutionary impetus of another, or perhaps also similar to the emotional division of the character Bella in the Twilight Saga, divided between the fiery friendship of the werewolf Jacob and the predestined passion for the vampire Edward. Moreover, as was recurring in pop culture and classical literature the situation of the division of a central character between two loves, or two beliefs or two values. In this case, I did not want to see me as one of these characters, I wanted to be myself. I interfered in their discussion. Boys, it doesn't matter who's right or not. Things won't change just by our will. We just follow the tide and we adapt or we die. Make no mistake, Mare. We can do more than you think, said Leandro with a very strong air of confidence. He wants to please you, Mare. So he came up with this story of being a fan of your blog. I looked at Marcos with some reserve and said, But wasn't that how you approached me at the beginning of the year? Yeah. But it was different. How different? Never mind. Marcos left the conversation wheel and went to the food table. I watched him for a moment. Then Leandro touched my arm and I turned. Let me tell you two things, Mare. First he's right about wanting to please you. But I really like your blog. Second. You can do much more than you think for the future. Surely, it's already done. I was still melting from the shock of his touch on my arm, and with the fact that he's talking low and close to my ear. I said, what do you mean by that? Continue on the path that is with your blog that soon you will understand. At that moment, my next cousin shouted for Leandro, who went to talk to him. After they had talked, he looked at me and I got a little blushed. He shouted to me already leaving. We talk later. Goodbye. I screamed back. Soon afterwards Marcos returns with a plate in his hand. He looked at me and had seen my farewell to Leandro, half sad and half angry. He came close to me and said, I guess at this point it's no use arguing much with you about not talking to this guy anymore. Not really Marcos. Not because I don't find your jealousy cute, but because I don't like anyone telling me what to do. I know. He ate a half-hearted piece of candy. Your attitude is very strange. To say the least. It's not that weird. Hmm. I'm not jealous. That's right. You're going to tell me that you were just protecting me from a great threat. Actually, that's right. So explain this great threat to me. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Continuing to support the channel's Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Subscribe, like, and share the video. Bye bye.